Hi, I'm Taja Eisen. I'm the author of the essay collection, Some of My Best Friends, and I'm a Spring 2024 Shearing Fellow here at the Black Mountain Institute, and I'm here to answer your questions. I love Vegas. I, um, I got married here two years ago. That was my first time um, visiting, and uh, my husband and I had been uh, stuck in Canada for all of the pandemic. And prior to that, you know, we like loved to travel, loved the desert. I had never been to Vegas. Um, and uh, so by the time we were able to travel again, it was extremely like, hey, you wanna blow this popsicle stand vibes? <laughs> we had talked about getting married and it was, it was perfect. Like the, the trip kind of came together in like a week. Um, my sister came, uh, my husband's best friend and his partner came, uh, so we had a little, Little wedding party of five at the Little White Wedding Chapel. Shout out to Minister Chuck, he was great. I'm now really happy to be uh, living here for a span. I guess I, I found the through line for this collection pretty organically. Um, I knew that an essay collection was something I wanted to write, but I didn't want it to feel like Taja Eisen shares her thoughts on a random variety of subjects. Like having that strong thematic core was really important to me. I could sense that there was some sort of, these essays were in some way in conversation with one another essays on the publishing industry, on like my own writing life, um, on, there was one essay that I wrote about being in law school. So I took these essays that I could sense some sort of relationship between, and I, I tried, I guess, various ways of, of trying to articulate to myself what they had in common. Um, and the first version of this book was actually sort of much more narrowly focused on how these questions of, um, you know, manifesting one's politics, the language of social justice, how it plays out in the kind of writing and publishing context specifically. Um, I sent the first version of the proposal to my agent and she said, this is super interesting, but would you consider something that takes a wider angle lens on the world? It was sort of that prompt that made me, that made me think and pushed me to articulate, okay, this is an essay collection about how the language of social justice is, um, you know, cannily and sometimes disingenuously used by various institutions. So recording the audiobook, I I was really nervous going into that process because I thought, you know, my whole like career and reputation as a voice actor kind of depends on professional distance. It's like I am a professional. I'm here to uh, be a vessel to help execute someone else's vision as cleanly as possible. And I worried that like going in there as the author and the voice actor, I was just gonna feel sort of too close to the material and there was gonna be a messiness to it. Um, like, like being in the studio with my sister, which is a thing that has happened. She is also a voice actor. And the first time we were in the studio together, we just looked at each other like, what are you doing here? Um, so I thought it was gonna be like that. To my surprise and pleasure, um, I was able to treat it like any other job. Um, any other job except, you know, one where I was like, hey, <laughs> this writing is great. Um, <laughs> so for me, it was really important at all times that the reader feel like they are in on the joke. Um, that I made very clear from the beginning that this is a book about a bizarre pattern that we have seen spring up in contemporary life that we are all living through. There were two things that were really important to me. Um, one was humor. Um, I feel like whenever I'm writing, I, I tend to just instinctively um, bring, try to bring a lot of liveliness and humor to the page. Um, but especially, you know, as it pertains to the issues in the book, um, I found a lot of the absurdity of the subject matter just inherently funny. And the other thing was just sort of building a portrait of a world that I hope felt familiar, um, largely through the cultural references in the book, um, the conversations that I was participating in. I wanted it to feel like a book that was, you know, not necessarily keyed to a specific moment, but that felt recognizably contemporary. Um, so that touched on not just sort of big social and cultural issues, but also texts and questions that would feel familiar um, and in that way kind of reach out to a reader regardless of where they were coming from. The new book is called Tough Love, but I don't, in general, uh, believe in strictly tough love as like the best pedagogical method, at least for me. That's not what brings out the best in me as a writer, and that's not really what I try to do as an editor. I don't think I will ever meet an editor who is harder on me than I am on myself.
which is not to say that I am an especially, you know, brutal editor to other people. I assure you, I'm quite pleasant to work with, but on myself, just like total hard ass. I did have an editor who <laughs> had a high bar for considering what was interesting, which I think is useful. I remember, you know, getting back a draft that had on it simply the comment, not on the entire draft, but you know, one section was just annotated with the all caps, boring. <laughs> I thought, oh my God. It was originally being edited as a writer that made me want to be an editor. Um, I felt like somebody was looking at my work and seeing, seeing it in like the future tense, not just what it was, but what it could be. And I thought, wow, I want to be able to, I want to be able to do this for other writers. Ideally, I want to be able to do it for myself too, but um, it would just be like so creatively rewarding if I could do this for other people. I have also learned a lot about being edited from my writers. Um, I feel like, <laughs> I mean, in a very sort of superficial way, like I, I feel like seeing the ways that other people interact with my feedback, sometimes just by pushing back, um, sort of expanded um, my understanding of how I could approach the relationship as a writer. Um, honestly, before that, I probably would have been like, okay, accept, 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 accept. Um, but it gave me the confidence to push back with editors if I disagreed with a call that they made on my work. No! Oh my God. <laughs> um, well, first I need, I need like, I need an image. Like I, you know, ordinarily for an audition, I'll get like, I'll get a sample of the script. And if I'm really lucky, I'll get um, a little sketch of what the character looks like. So we have to pick an animal. So I feel like it's the Black Mountain Institute. We want an animal who like hangs out on, you know, on, in or around the mountains. Maybe we say a, a bighorn sheep. I feel like that would be a, a cute, charming mascot. Okay, no, I can do it. I can improv you a little sheep voice. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the Black Mountain Institute. <laughs> Please don't use this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think you should read it.